So today we have put out a challenge to each other to find a car that would be dependable and something not ugly. Right now, we are on the hunt. And this is what each of us have found. I have found a 2005 Impala LS. It is the mid-grade of the Impalas. And I, for $4,500, have got a 2005 Impala SS, which is the highest grade model of this particular year. The LS that I have located has approximately 92,000 miles on it. It's found here in central Ohio, like all the cars that we do. More importantly, this particular car that I have found has zero rust, both on the body and underneath it. My 2005 Impala that I also found here in central Ohio does indeed have zero rust also, but I am packing a supercharged 3.8 V6 opposed to the mid-grained issue 3.8 liter with no supercharger. All right, let's give you a little bit of brief history about these particular Impalas. First of all, back in 1996, we saw the last of the rear wheel drive Impalas, which kind of broke many people's hearts, and we didn't know if we'd ever see another Impala again. Now, jump forward to the year 2000, when General Motors brought out this particular body style of the Impala, the new front wheel drive 3.8 liter V6. Definitely a stark contrast to the previous generation with its big 350 rear wheel drive massive car. One major difference also from the 96 models till now, those were, as he said, rear wheel drive, but they were also a full steel frame car where these are a unibody car. That also would change as far as weight handling and just the overall manufacturing of the cars because the GM just does not do a full frame steel frame car anymore. So now we got to talk about the 600 pound gorilla in the room when it comes to General Motors products from this time period. Although this car was very well received, there is one issue that whether or not you purchase these particular ones that we found or any others from this time period, it is the ignition switch. That was a huge issue for General Motors that caused not only a massive lawsuit, but a loss of life. Now, I do know that both of these have had the ignition switch is changed and they've been replaced. All right, so let's look at the white Impala, the LS platform here. As you can see, that this is just a standard white. It's, there's nothing special about it. It's that cool whip white, but I will say once again that this car has no rust on it. And something else that's pretty unique about the 2005s, if I'm not mistaken, whether it be this particular uh, one or we have the other Super Sport over there. If you look at this strip that runs across the car that usually is intended so when someone opens their doors, it doesn't kind of ding your car as much or you don't ding theirs. These are painted from the factory, so that's kind of unusual that this is the last year for that car, and they decided to actually do something that people wanted from the get-go, which was to kind of mask or camouflage that stupid strip. So the 2005s do all have that. And so with that being said, let's start with the taillights of this car, because that's going to be the most distinctive feature about these cars. General Motors tried to pay homage to the original Impala, you know, the ones that we all really like, the ones that have the circular lights in the back. So these have that. The white one does not have the painted covers in the back. Instead, you've got this kind of this black smoke screen here look to it. And I'll say that on this particular one, because the car is white, it does give some contrast to it. So it, it, I'm saying that that's really not a bad choice to actually go with this one. Now, as we start to walk around the car, we're going to look at the insignia. If you're one of those people that love to plaster your car with uh, the manufacturer's name and definitely the model of the car, you're going to be highly let down on the Impala. It just says Impala LS right here on the back. It does not go and glorify it and say Impala all over. With this, we're going to walk around to the, uh, the front side of the car. And, you know, it's your standard kind of classic looking cars from this time period. Nothing too fancy about it. Or, for example, if you look at the uh, the grill of this car, this is the standard grill. It's There's nothing fancy about it. There's nothing unique. Now you could change it out real fast. It's just, it's average, you know, nothing great about it. But if we start looking down further on the bumper of the car, this one is also, you know, it's it, it does have the fog lights in the front, you know. It's, it, it works. It's just, it's just an everyday driving car, which is kind of the goal that I went, that I was looking for when I was looking for a car. 
Then as we start to go into the inside of this car, if we look at the, the instrument gauges, pretty generic, pretty standard across all General Motors products. You've got your analog gauges here. Something else with the interior of this particular one, I mean, it's big, it's spacious. You know, I can get into this car, I'm six foot, I fit just fine in the front seat. Yeah, and that being said, because I'm six foot five, the reason why I chose the Impala is because the front seats in the front area do have a lot of leg room. I, I can surprisingly stretch my legs out compared to the average vehicle that I drive. So for me, it's a very comfortable ride. But yes, if you were to put someone behind me, space is going to be extremely limited. All right, so if we look a little bit further at the dash here, you know, it's, you got your standard stuff here. It's, it's nice, it's big, it's cheap plastics. You know, of course, that's General Motors motif. You know, if we have to invest in anything beyond hard plastics, they might actually go bankrupt again. So expect that, that you're not going to find anything in the LS that's really high grade. It does have this... The plastic uh, wood grain, you know, if you're one of those people that you know, want to bring nature into your car and you think you're going to fool somebody with it, hey, they have at you, you've got that. As we swing around to the uh, the engine of this car, you're going to see right there, just your standard uh, 3.8, nothing great. Reliable engine, most people will agree with that. You know, one other interior note, the base model 3.4 liter all came with bench seats, occasional buckets, and shifters on the column, where the LS and the SS are floor shift. And one really odd thing that I've noticed, that in the earlier years, 2001 and 2, on the shift on the floor, they actually had the markings for it, park, neutral, drive, first gear, second gear, etc., where the 05, 04s don't have it, it's just blank. So the only way you know what gear you're in is a digital readout on your dash. The wheels of this car are 16 inches. They ride extremely well, they handle bumps very well, but that changes as we get over to the Super Sport. Going with the Purple Grimace car, the Super Sport, my choice. So for $4,500, we essentially got the same car, but this one, if you look on the outside surface, you can see you have a different grill, you have a little extra ground effects in the front fascia, you got your your covered taillights that are painted to match the car, your flat sporty wing that goes with the vehicle. You know, 17 inch wheels, a little bit lower profile tires, dual exhaust. That's the main difference on the outside that you're gonna see just from first glance of the two cars. But the main significant difference is underneath the hood right here. When you pop it open, you're gonna see the supercharged 3.8 V6, 250 of GM's finest horses racing down the road. If you step back and look at this car now, you're going to say to yourself, is that blue? Is that purple? What's going on here? I'll tell you what's going on here. It's called Laser Blue. Laser Blue was offered in 2005 only on the SS models. So as you can see, you look at it in one light, it's more of a blue. You turn to another angle, it's more of a purple. I turn it is just awesome. I disagree. This is the Grimace Mobile. As you can see on this particular one, it's a lot like the LS model where it's very subtle on the badging. This one actually doesn't even have anything on it around the whole car except for two Impala emblems on the side, one on the trunk lid. If you look down below the trim on both doors, you can slightly see where it says Impala SS in the same body color. I guess you'd say it's just a plastic sticker stuck to the doors. Have Both of these vehicles have come equipped with factory moonroof slash sunroof, which unfortunately they both slide over the roof. I'm not a huge fan of that. At least you can say you have it for a selling aspect. You have a moonroof slash sunroof in the vehicle. Stepping inside this car, I would say kind of a charcoal gray, kind of a silver gray, you know. And you can see looking at the trim, it doesn't have the typical plastic wood. This one instead has the plastic carbon fiber. But this one does actually have a few gauges in the cluster compared to the other one. You have your tack, your speedometer, oil pressure, battery, and then the all-important boost for the supercharger because everybody needs to know how much boost you're putting out with your supercharger. This particular one also, too, has a, a few more buttons on the steering wheel, which would be your radio, your volume, your changing stations, all that good stuff. But this one you can't really see because the owner now had painted them a flat black because GMs were notorious for their stereos, heater controls, and steering wheel controls. The paint just rubs right off. Now let's put them on the road and let's see which of these heaps, if either of them, that we would buy. Here's my way of syncing the audio. What's the models on it? Uh, 92,000. So let me tell you why I think this car would be worth it more so than 
the purple people eater, all right? First of all, this car's got a lot lower miles, which is good because if you're buying a car that you want to drive every day to work reliable for your kids to go places, grocery shopping, whatever, low miles is always good. Absolutely. The other thing I think the reason why this car is much better of a, of, from a standpoint of a purchase is because I think when you start putting things on there like a supercharger, you're going to immediately start adding things on there that it's more money to replace it, it's more susceptible to braking, and I'm not sure. I'm not, I don't own, I've never owned a car with a supercharger, uh, but I, I wonder if the insurance is more on the purple people eater or this one. Insurance would be a little more, I believe, and you also got to add in the fact that everyday maintenance, gasoline, you got to use premium opposed to regular gas, oh. oil, you got to use synthetic opposed to regular oil. So there you're already, your cost is going up right there too. So that's a big consideration. Now, the other thing that I think is a reason that I would want this car too. So this is something most people don't think about because we, we this car does not have the upgraded wheels on it. But when people start upgrading wheels, black squirrel, they're everywhere. Uh, people start forgetting that your ride quality changes. The bigger circumference, lower profile tires. Yeah, absolutely. And so I'm, I'm guessing haven't drove I have not drove the purple people eater yet but I would think that the suspension on that might be just a little harsher because of the wheels themselves not a whole lot but it also causes you to replace the tires more frequently because they're lower profile and Absolutely. more expensive now I think it's no secret that I am not a General Motors fan they broke my heart too many times with the products but I will say that the Impala has always been a very reliable mm. car. I mean, if the car wasn't reliable, I highly doubt police forces are, back in the day would not have purchased this vehicle. They're cheap to fix, they're reliable, they're easy on gas. This particular one would get around 20, 22 in the city and about 30 on the highway, where the blue one would get probably about 18 and 28 because of the supercharger, you'd use a little more fuel. I just, I think that if I had to choose between the two, me personally, I think this would be the one. Uh, now, we'll wait till we drive the other one to see, but I really think that if you are in the market for a, a dependable car that's gonna get you from point A to point B without continually breaking down, without, without a lot of maintenance, an Impala is actually a really good safe bet this particular one it drives smooth uh there doesn't seem to be any issues with the idling there's no there's no lights on the instrument cluster saying hey something needs fixed rust free for this region is yeah. a big significant deal and another just to add to regional depending on where you live these cars are really good in the snow with the front wheel drive if you have some good tires they're pretty much unstoppable now this car is not going to have all the bells and whistles it is not a luxury car take that for what it's worth i personally think that's a good thing because far too many times luxury cars break down with the smallest electronic or just something mechanical you know but it's it's an okay car i mean it's, a, it's an average car yeah and for the price that you're looking to pay a vehicle like this 4500 it is i think a really good buy just for a good strong everyday driver that you know you're going to get in turn the key you're going to get from point a to point b it's relatively safe it's really reliable it's not a bad looking car they're good looking cars yeah i think you know i, I you know i will say this about it. now that you brought that up this would be the last thing i'll mention about it, is when you mentioned about the styling i have found that the styling after they they got rid of them in the 90s and they came back mm -hmm. with this one in the, the, the uh, 2000s this styling from the from that point on the 2000s up this was the best style the newer ones the ones that uh succeeded this yeah, one 06 i'm not a fan they're, they're ugly all right let's go ahead and drive that uh it's technically blue so let's try the blue impala. laser blue impala ss laser blue all right let's do it let's drive grimace part two this my friends 2005 Impala SS, supercharged, 
250 horsepower more. 200 standard issue in the LS, 250 in the Impala SS. That's why I chose this car. Yes, it may not be as economically smart as the previous car, but this is all about personal preference. Do you want a little bit sharper styling on the outside with a different wing, a little front fascia, different wheels, stronger engine, or do you want the cookie cutter every day? But did you mention the mileage? I did not. So for the same price, 4,500, that previous vehicle had 92,000 miles, where this one has 129,000 miles. That just that stings having that extra almost 40,000 miles on it. Indeed it does. But you're getting an extra 50 horsepower. You're getting heated seats. You're getting carbon fiber interior that you didn't have in the other one. The bigger wheels and tires, which we spoke of before. This one does have slotted and drilled brakes and ceramic brakes, which are nice. Slotted and drilled rotors. As we're driving this car, one thing that I noticed, a, a distinctive difference, and it, it, it might be because of the suspension uh, changes. For some reason, this one drives, I think, just a hair, like, it's more comfortable. I don't know if it's the seats, I don't know if it's the suspension setup, but right now, I don't feel as much of the, the road noise. Yeah, and in, in this particular car too, as we discussed earlier, going from a 16 to a 17 inch tire size and low profile tires, it really isn't a dramatic difference. You know, I, I, I will say this, if you are probably one of those people that if if you are going to go once again get an everyday car, this is a front wheel drive car, which is great in Ohio. There is no rust on this particular car. Absolutely, we have two rust free survivors, which is a rarity in this yeah. state. It's a 15 year old car and to have that, and I think that the idea of that it's rust free, the bottoms of the cars are, don't have any rust either. You know, a lot of times you'll see that where in cars where this, this is like you'll look under it and it's totally rusted out. Yeah, it's got a great paint job, but no, it's actually on whichever you were to choose. And I think that's something, something really rare here in Ohio. Well, and that also is what it helps add to the value because if these were a typical Ohio car with your typical rust, you're not getting $4,500 for this car. You're going to be more along the lines of like a $3,500 car. Just because as soon as someone walks up to it and looks at it, who wants a rusty holy car? I don't. The good Lord does. When we talk about the car, one of the biggest styling features, other than the, the fact that this one's got that honeycomb grill on it, which does look pretty slick on it. Mm -hmm. And in this particular model, has that very rare laser blue, AKA Grimace. One year only. Yeah, one year. And so I think, you know, if you're looking for a car that is gonna be reliable, dependable, Maybe this one might be it. I don't know. I still think the white one I would go with just because I'm not a fan of the supercharger. And speaking of the supercharger, this would be the reason why people would prefer to have a car like this. The extra 50 horsepower, you go out and you merge and you get on it, she will go. It's not just about the horsepower. It's about the, the torque, how quickly, because the supercharger, yes. if, if you were to go out and get a car from this time period that did have a turbo, which would be, I don't even know what cars from 2005. That lag. Turbo at least lag. The supercharger doesn't have it, so you could feel that kick. Constant could, power. And that, that's a good thing. Now, I am going to make a side reference here. 65 Impala right there? Is that what that is? Yes, sir, oh. four-door. And look at that Chevy right there. That Chevy, sweet. Those are, I wish those people would sell those. Sorry. Back to, back to the Impala here. Uh, I don't know. This is, it would be a toss-up. It would be a toss-up. Hey, to me, what you're asking yourself is, again, you have $4,500 in your hand. You have two cars that are virtually the same, but have significant differences. What's more important to you? Low miles, cheaper maintenance, performance, a little bit of styling difference, and a little more horsepower. It is really going to be the only significant difference between these two cars. They're both rust-free. They're both free of any major damage or any problems like that. So it's really going to be about the few aesthetics on the outside and the 50 horsepower. All right, here it comes. Let's just say that we found the white one, the LS. Would you buy that heap or not? It's just the white one. 4,500 and I need a car? Absolutely. All right. Then I think goes without saying, would you buy this particular oh, heap? For sure. Just because I'm a sucker for the, the the outside ground effects, the different wing and taillights, the supercharged motor. I fall for the jingling keys. 
for me, the white one, yes, I would definitely buy, especially if I were going to work, I needed to take my kids around, I needed to go to the grocery store, I needed a really reliable, dependable car. Yes. There were parts were accessible. However, I don't think I would buy this one just because I would be afraid. Great car, good car. Great buy, good buy. In the comments below, let us know what you think. Would you buy either of these heaps? If so, which one? Let us know. Tell us what you think. Are you the smart, more economical shopper? Or are you the jingling key impulsive shopper like me? In the comments below, tell us which heap you would choose. As always, thank you for watching. And if you have a heap for sale in Central Ohio that you would like us to drive and see if it's worth it, please reach out to us. We would love to drive your car.